Yeah, if I got asked to be the next James Bond, I certainly wouldn't say no. Hi, I'm Tom Pryor, and this is my cover shoe with Attitude, and it's on sale now. Firebird is a forbidden love story set in the Russian Air Force at the height of the Cold War, and it follows our protagonist, Sergei, who I play, um, who was finishing his last days of military conscription, and then he basically dramatically falls in love with a superior Air Force fighter pilot and it's really their story over a number of years and how they really fight to be together in a totalitarian system where it's legal and they can't be. Overall the reaction to the film has been really heartwarming actually. We, I honestly had no idea how people were going to react to the film because having been you know, writing the film and then acting in the film and being one of the producers, having had so much work put into it, we never really knew actually how it was going to play with audiences until we got it out there and actually the first time we premiered the film to a live audience was at Frameline Film Festival in San Francisco and yeah, it was, it was honestly very humbling to see how profoundly moved people were by the story and, um, and how affected it's, it's really touched and affected many people. Films are one of the most powerful ways which you can help change the world. And I'm a great believer in demonstrating those behaviours uh, which you want to see as, as the change in the world. And so, you know, it's a real privilege to be able to play a, a real person who lived and, and fought through such a terrifically tragic time um, that it, it's so, yeah, it's, it's so amazing to be able to step into the shoes of somebody else who's, who's done it. And, um, and really as a, as a pioneer, of following your heart at all costs. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure playing somebody uh, real and, and, you know, getting to meet the real Sergei in Russia and getting to know him and, and actually also in that time him passing away. Um, it, it's actually been like an immense pressure because uh, when we found out that he was ill, um, he went for some pretty serious surgery and passed away afterwards. And um, Peter, the director, and I discussed whether it would be appropriate for us to go to the funeral. And so we spoke with his best friend, and uh, he said, of course, like it would be like amazing to have us there. And so I remember standing in this Russian Orthodox church uh, in the middle of deep Russia, uh, three hours from Moscow, and this uh, whole sort of ceremonial practice and all this incense and this very like surreal moment where I made a, a sort of pledge to him. I just said, you know, like I will tell your story and leave your legacy as best as I can. And that's kind of quite a, a pressure to load upon yourself, but also, you know, quite a pressure to have to, to leave the memory of somebody. And um, on some of the hardest days on set, I uh, I really like struggled with that because you know it was like am I doing you justice am I telling a story as, as well as I can and I gave it my all so I hope that it comes through in the performance. When it comes to uh, casting right now it is a very uh, politically challenging subject um, and my stance really on it is that I believe that the person who can play the role as truthfully as possible should get the part. And it's a very slippery slope to start going down saying certain, uh, you know, gender types or certain sort of intricacies of wherever you are on, on this sliding scale. Um, means that you can't or can play certain parts. And I think if discrimination goes one way, unfortunately, it will probably go the other way as well. And so I really believe that, you know, casting should be based upon merit and upon suitability and believability. Like my job as an actor is to be as truthful as possible. And, you know, sometimes I read a script and I just go, I honestly don't believe that I could play this part believably. Now, whether that's obviously down to the, the disagreement of somebody else is a different matter, but 
my personal stance is that we should cast people who can play the most truthful of the situation if they can relate to the situation and the character as much as possible. And I'm amazed to see actually how um, much more inclusive studios are becoming and very quickly but I would really love to see that continue to, to grow and also stories to develop around those um, particular subject areas because it's all very well to take a LGBTQIA um, sort of story but we kind of need to like integrate it into existing stories to make it actually as inclusive as possible as opposed to going it's just about the the love actually it's about the love within an environment within a greater story which actually really i believe helps with the level of inclusion um, to make the the narrative as as exciting as possible and as accessible as possible I've spoken before about um, my excitement around James Bond and Jason Bourne and, and you know these kind of action and, and sort of Marvel-like characters and I would absolutely love to play James Bond or, or you know a spy uh, espionage type character. Um, it's, some, it's something that fuels and excites me immensely and um, I don't believe that actually there's quite enough of those stories being made right now and I think that they're really popular and very exciting and certainly very exciting to shoot. Um, so yeah, if I got asked to be the next James Bond, I certainly wouldn't say no.